ahead and get started with our first episode. Now, first episode's a bit of a double header because we're going to talk about what seems to be like one of the most badass jobs. So, from the year 2016 to 2018, in India, there's a man-eating tiger and her two cubs walking around. <laughs> That's my tiger noise. That's the prowl before they go. Row! And they're eating people. 13 people are killed. And the the villagers are like, dude, this totally sucks. This tiger's eating all of us. And the reason why the cubs were also a target, because the mama tiger would kill someone and then let the little cubs eat it. So they have all become officially man-eating tigers, which means they have to be put down. They have developed a taste for that sweet, sweet human meat. Someone has to take them out. Now, in this is dope. This is what I thought was so dope. There is a hunter named Nawab Shafaf Ali Khan. And he is the, he's like a big game hunter to the point where the, he's basically the James Bond of big game hunters. The government calls him up and they're like, Khan, we need your help. And he's like, I'm already on it. <laughs> and they're like, how'd you know we wanted that rhino killed? He's like, I don't know, I read the news. He goes around and they hire him to take out wild animals. He's, they've sent him to kill a rogue elephant or more, more than one. He actually killed his first rogue elephant when he was only 19. They were having this huge boar infestation in the area. And they're like, hey, we need you to go in and cull the boar in this area. He killed 250 of them. And he's like, I'm just doing a social service. <laughs> we were like, dude, you're kind of nuts, man. You're like killing all these animals. Conservation groups hate him. And when this case first came out, when all these people are getting killed. The conservation groups were like, no, no, you don't know if the, you, what happens if you find the tiger and it's not the right tiger and you shoot that one and. He's kind of like, I, I, I've been doing this job for a while. Like, I know what I'll be tracking. And they're like, no, you must have harmony and balance with nature. Now, I don't have a problem with, obviously, conservation efforts. But if you have a tiger that's killed 13 people, and in the months before they hired him, he had killed three people, The not him, the tiger. The tiger had killed three people in one month. So the government's like, they let it go on for two years. The government's like, this is just going to get worse. And Khan was like, the area is starting, there's not a lot of other animals for the tiger to eat where the tiger's at, so it's just going to keep eating humans until we stop it. Conservation groups try to block him from the hunt. The court ruled that you can go out and kill the tiger, but actually they ruled you can capture the tiger, but if you can't capture it, you can kill it. But try to capture it. I'm sure Khan had like his fingers crossed behind his back, and he's like, oh yeah, sure, capture it. He ends up, again, this is just totally badass. So he goes to hunt it, and he shows up at the place, you know, like, the village area. And he's like, I don't need jeeps. I hunt on elephants. So he's riding elephants. Him and his team are riding elephants through the area. Now, I imagine, I know India is quite populous, but I imagine this particular part of India is more like on the outskirts. So it's not like he's riding elephants through Mumbai, like shooting, shooting, shooting the tiger as it's like running through the streets. I don't think it's like Black Hawk Down, where it's like this huge urban warfare. Although now that I say that, that would be quite cool. Eventually, it takes him about a month. This thing had been around for two years. It takes him about a month or two. They do corner it. His son takes the shot. His son actually does end up killing the tiger. Family business. And so... People complained that it was killed and stuff like that. And he's like, listen, he also, this is, he, he's pretty good at his quotes, too. He is basically the James Bond of hunters. His quote was, when people complained about him killing it, him killing animals in general, he goes, blame the courts. Blame the courts. This is his exact quote. My job is of a hangman. I am the man who is putting the noose on the convict and pushing the button of the gallows. So it's not his decision to kill these things. The government is saying, go take care of this. And he's like, okay. Just like a hangman has said, you got to kill this guy. And the hangman's like, okay, it's a living, right? But they do kill it. And then when they asked him before he started the hunt, too, this is another quote I like, before he started a hunt, they were asking him, hey, so why do you want to kill this tiger? And he goes, I have no desire to shoot the tiger or even capture it. They've called me because they are incompetent. He killed all these people over two years, takes care of it in a month. So, and he's just going to go on now. It's a, you know, it's a family business. His son will carry on his legacy. I find that interesting. That's a much longer segue than I expected to the story that I do want to address right now. And this is the story of, I talked before about cryptids who killed people. And I found one, the Popelik monster. 
I may have found that other one. I think it really depends on what you believe, but it definitely has racked up quite the body count. We're going to Malai. Malawai, sorry. We're going to Malawai. It's the year 2002. It's August. People are just kind of wandering, doing their things in their village, fetching water, making clay pots, watching friends. I don't know. It's not back in time. So, I mean, they, they was a village, so they didn't have a huge infrastructure. But, you know, it's not like they were just sitting around doing, like, shadow puppets and stuff. And this guy goes, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go get some more water. And everyone's like, okay, you know, spy dad. So they they should have hugged him. That's it. That joke's in bad taste. Guy's walking off through the darkness to go get some water. He's glowing green eyes. He's all of a sudden we see beast vision running towards him. Point of view of the creature, like a bad horror movie. The man is beset by a creature, knocks him to the ground, attacks him, rips off his hands, <laughs> and then his legs. A short time after that, man's walking around the village on the outskirts, not. Thinking safety in numbers, walking around the outskirts. Thinking, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen on Friends tonight. I wonder if Ross and Rachel will ever end up together. Creature. (laughs) Attacks him. Huge claw. Shreds him. Ripping out both of his eyes. And both of his ears, oddly enough. Short time after that. People are getting a little leery at this point. Short time after that. A woman is... Doing her laundry. I don't know specifically what these people were doing. I just know that they were attacked. This woman's doing her laundry. She's hanging it up on her clothesline. She's thinking, that Chandler Bing all of a sudden gets attacked from behind, smashed to the ground, feels powerful jaws begin to close over her head. Oh, wait, no. For this to happen, she gets smashed from the front, lands on her back, (laughs) feels powerful fangs start to claw into her head. Something eats off her nose and her mouth. These are the survivors, by the way. Five dead, 20 horribly maimed by this creature. A four-legged creature that's just attacking people on sight, really. The police come into the area. The paramilitary police come into the area. A bunch of game rangers come in. They're searching for it. They can't find it. Finally, though, they do find a large beast roaming the wilderness, and they light it up. (laughs) Kill it. And they go, oh, it was a hyena. It was just a rabid hyena. It's a one-off incident. Freak of nature. Now, the villagers are saying, we saw it, and we knew what it looked like. It wasn't a hyena. Like, it was like a quadruped. It was like a beat, like a predator type beat, not like alien predator, but like a like a four legged, like hairy creature monster. Well, they said hyenas had really small legs, and the creature that was attacking us was much bigger. And the government's like, no, it's we shot it. It was a rabid hyena. It trust us. It that makes sense. That's why the hyena would be attacking people. That's why it was just like super vicious. It was crazy. It wasn't thinking. People are like, eh, you know, maybe, maybe. Seven months later, villagers are going about their day. Now, I want to say this isn't one village either. This is a massive landscape with multiple villages, because we'll see the number pop up here in a second. It's not just like one village of 10 people. This is, this is a pretty big land mass with these different villages in it. Seven months later, though, the villagers are walking around just <laughs> doing villager stuff, and they notice a lump in the field probably about 30, 40 feet away. They walk over to it, and they're like, oh, I hope I hope that's not what I think it is. It kind of looks like a human body. Old woman with her head crushed and intestines half-eaten hanging out of her body. They're like, uh, oh, no. This isn't good. Short time after that, more attacks. <laughs> People just getting just horribly disfigured by this creature appearing out of the darkness. They find another old woman, head just completely just (laughs) guts ripped out, half eaten. And then what really started to spark the panic was they found another body, not quite as large as a woman's, it was a, a, a baby, half eaten. 
4,000 people from all these different villages in the area, 4,000 people just packed their stuff up and left. They marched all the way to this community center, and they're just, it was like 100 kilometers away from the villages. They had like this big community center. 4,000 people just said, we're done. Packed up the stuff that they had, and they marched all the way there, and they said, we're just, we are staying in here until that thing is killed. Because this second round of attack, three dead, 16 wounded. Just seven months after the first attack. And the government says, listen, it must be another rabbit hyena, right? And the villagers are saying, no. This is the spirit of the creature that you killed coming back for more blood. That story happened in August 2002. There was absolutely no follow-up to it. Now, and this story was from the BBC. This wasn't like from some fringe website. The, the Malawi Terror Beast is what it's called. It has popped up now on cryptid websites. These initial reports, there's tons of people quoted. There's doctors and politicians and villagers and things like that. These are very, very well-sourced stories. And there's no resolution to it. There's no, oh, we, they finally killed it and it was another rabbit hyena. There's nothing. The story just ends with that second news report of the mass migration of people. The end. Nothing. Very bizarre. Now, it's fair to say that back in 2002, internet record keeping isn't to the level it is now. But it's kind of creepy. What if there was something out? I mean, like, if it's just weird to me that the story just ends, that there's absolutely no follow-up. Did the 4,000 people eventually go back to their villages? I doubt they're still in the community center. But did they ever catch this thing? Was it ever, yes, another rabbit hyena? What, was what they killed the first time not the right creature? And if it wasn't, if there was a cryptid operating in that area, and it knew it was being hunted, and basically the hunters kill another creature and they think that's it, what level of intelligence would you need of a natural predator to say, you know what, I'm going to lay low for a while. I'm going to lay low. Let them let get not scared of me anymore. And then I'm going to come back when they least expect it. Weird. It's a weird story. I imagine if you had a cryptid that was smart enough to lead the hunters to go kill another animal and then come back around and start eating people again. That's incredibly unlikely. It's incredibly unlikely. But yeah, I think the story's interesting because it is a cryptid with a body count. It came back from the dead or just another hyena got rabies. And there's no resolution to it. It could still be going on. Or just have ended with them never catching the second creature. Those poor people could still be at the community center and they never found out that yes, Ross and Rachel did end up together. Malawi Terror Beast, another cryptid with a body count. I bet you there's a lot more out there. And what's funny is I bet you there's a lot more out there because the people who see them don't come back to tell the tale. And that actually leads us into our next story. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.